Welcome to Moscow, Mike. How do you like your new apartment? Nice digs. I see where all that Black Ops funding really goes now. Invoking Alpha Protocol does have its upside. Jealous. Of you freezing your butt off in Moscow? Not so much. Although there is a certain appeal to sitting in that loft drinking cocoa while you are crawling around in the snow. Ooh, you're a cruel woman. All right, down to business then. Do you have a plan of attack for Moscow? Thought I'd hit some ritzy nightclubs, announce my name to anybody who'll listen, maybe flirt with a mob boss's girlfriend. That should get the right people's attention. Okay. But I'm not going to bail you out if you get taken. Ruin all my fun, why don't you? What will you follow up on first? Not sure yet. The missile launchers were moved through Leningradsky Station. There might be intel there. I've also got a CIA informant codenamed Grigori, and a mob underboss called Lazo. Finding those missiles is important, although more information would be helpful. But from his file, Grigori looks like the type who would sell information about you to interested parties. Lazo might be able to provide some leads, too. Plus, they might be able to tell me what bars and strip joints I should hit while I'm here. If you're trying to make me jealous... I'm an international super spy. I have obligations. Just call when you have anything new, hotshot. Michael Thornton. Welcome to Moscow. You are fresh from Taipei, yes? I feel honored. Your first time in Moscow, and I am your first stop. What brings Michael Thornton, world traveler, to this humble bar? I wanted to ask you some questions about Halbeck and the weapons they've been smuggling through Moscow. You are here conducting an investigation. Very interesting. In a sense, yes. Halbeck's involved in serious arms trafficking violations. I want to stop them. Interfering in such things is dangerous in Moscow. But you must know this. That's why I need all the friends and information I can get. <laughs> Friendship is good, yes. Getting killed, not so good. I guess it depends on whether you're a gambling man. To gamble, Mr. Thornton, one must have money. I'm a little short on funds right now. I don't think I can meet your price. That is too bad. My price still stands, however. Maybe I should investigate you instead. You are joking. Anything but. I'm after Halbeck, but if I find out you're involved with them, then I'm bringing you down too. I have nothing to do with them. 
Then you won't mind me digging around and checking with my contacts to be sure? I am innocent, but I do not need the distraction, not at my age. What is it you wish to know, Agent Thornton? Stopping the missile shipment is my top priority. What was their destination? That is a difficult question, but I know someone who would know the answer. There is a man, Sergei Sarkov. He runs several businesses in Moscow. He may know who Halbeck is dealing with. Sergei Sarkov. Running a check on the name now. We're getting a lot of hits. He shouldn't be hard to find. Although, judging from his contact list, figuring out where his next appointment is could take some time. All right, I think I can wait a little longer. And there's a few other leads I'd like to track down. You were planning to investigate Leningradsky Station, yes? Maybe you can do me a favor. A favor? Your American missiles are not the only cargo that comes through the station. If you go, maybe you could divert these shipments accidentally, of course. What, you mean change the shipping labels? And me without my label maker. It is more simple than that. The box destination is stenciled on the side, but it is a code. Change it with a marker, and the boxes will end up somewhere else. To a friend of ours who will be happy to reimburse us, maybe do a little business with you. I'll think about it. What more can an old man ask for? We have to jump right to business. I could really use a drink first. Then you are lucky you've come to a bar. I am short on cash, so you will have to make your own way. That go for events going on in Moscow, too? And here I thought we were not going to jump right to business. <laughs> a cough like that, this bar may not be the best place to hang out. Secondhand smoking. <coughs> I quit three times this morning. Second-hand smoke is my way of getting by. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt your coughing, or your drinking, but I wanted to know who Halbeck's friends are here in Moscow. What specifically do you wish to know? If they have friends at all? Now that is a question in itself. I want to know who Halbeck's working with. That is a difficult question, but I know someone who would know the answer. There is a man. Sergei Sarkov. He runs several businesses in Moscow. He may know who Halbeck is dealing with. Sergei Sarkov. Running a check on the name now. We're getting a lot of hits. He shouldn't be hard to find. Although, judging from his contact list, figuring out where his next appointment is could take some time. All right. You were planning... It is more simple. The 
Not do that. And if you need a place to buy weapons, armor, devices, I can help you there too. I may not know Holbeck, but I know many others who are not friends of theirs. I'd appreciate that. What's the price tag for the reference? Directing a customer to a shopkeeper friend? No price tag. Just business. All right. Thanks, Grigori. I appreciate it. I appreciate you not being an asshole when talking to me, Michael. Other agents, too stiff. Others, too much cowboy. You come to me as a human being. Should be rewarded, no?
Because he's dead. I'm the main man. You wait. What's going on here?
What, nothing to say? This silent treatment of yours is starting to hurt my feelings. And after all we've been through, too. You're just a kid, so I'm willing to let this go. You keep pushing it. there? I'm here. Someone was jamming the frequency. Are you all right? Yeah, I think so. What's up with the connection? Looks like something's interfering with the transmission. Or... Great. You guys again. And I take it you're the leader? I ran into a little friend of yours tonight, hanging out with your G22 buddies. She's quite the little firecracker, although she doesn't talk much. Well, except with those pistols of hers. That would be my bodyguard, sis. And I know you spared her life. That's why I'm calling. I didn't want to fight her. I was only there for Lazo. But she didn't give me much choice. It was under my orders, Mike, but I didn't realize you would be there. Else, I would have instructed Sis to behave differently. So should I ask what G-22 is doing in Moscow? You guys sure seem to get around. It's a rather long answer, Mike. One I'd like to discuss more, if you'd be up for it. Is your bodyguard invited? If so, I'll need body armor. I'm afraid it's required she be present. We're not supposed to be apart. It's how G-22 operates in the field. But like you, I tend to bend the rules for the sake of the greater good. I'll leave the choice up to you, but I can't wait long. If you want to discuss your future, then meet me at the following coordinates. It isn't far. And come alone. All right. But I better not be walking into an ambush and tell Sis to keep her distance. I will do so. I will not wait long, Mike. So if you want to speak to me, you'll have to do it soon. Beautiful night. Let's not ruin it by shooting each other. It's all right, sis. Hello, Mike. No trouble finding the place, I hope. No. I was curious why you wanted to talk in person. Telemarketing through the video screen seemed more your style. Sometimes. At the moment, I'd rather show a little more trust in each other. You spared sis's life. For that, you have my thanks. I have something of hers. Here. Did she give that to you? I see. The locket is a childhood memento. Perhaps those days are gone. Regardless, thank you for sparing her life. The gratitude comes from both of us, it seems. Well, things were a little tense on Lazo's yacht. It happens. Just glad things didn't get too carried away. No hard feelings, kid? She's a mute. Let's walk. Sis will make sure we're not interrupted. All right. So, what did you want to talk about? I know to all outward appearances you're a rogue agent. I also know about Alpha Protocol. And in your case, it's being used for its intended purpose. It wasn't my choice, really. One of my associates made the decision for me. I disagree. You had other options, I'm sure. Did enacting Alpha Protocol change your mission? 
No. Then you should be proud of your accomplishment. What accomplishment? It's not often that one gets to turn the tools of their own government against them, and for the right reasons. And Alpha Protocol? It is a powerful tool. Between Halbeck and you, I'm beginning to feel like everyone knows about Alpha Protocol. It may seem that way. I'd argue you're simply traveling in a smaller circle here, on the fringe of international politics. I don't know what you want, Albatross. G22's agenda? Doesn't seem like you have one. No. We have aspirations, as does any government. But we believe that agendas are accomplished by careful study and observation. If the status quo is disrupted, it makes predicting triggers and events more... difficult. You sound like one of the analysts of Alpha Protocol I know. Alpha Protocol has always had someone in that role. It helps them function as intended, no matter what iteration of the program. It's an odd thing. A government-sponsored program whose purpose is to prevent being policed by its own government. Now what kind of foundation is that for a country? I guess you have to trust your country and act in its best interests. Do you trust your country? I do. I believe in the mission. I propose we become allies. What, I become a member of G-22? No. I propose we cooperate. You will find that as extensive as Alpha Protocol's leftover safe houses and gadgets are, well, G-22 has access to much more. And the price? Let us say, I owe you. You've already paid me, and the only currency I value. What do you say? All right. I need all the friends I can get. But for some reason, I trust you. You won't regret it, Mike. We're out of time, I'm afraid. Thank you for listening to me, Mike. I know you have a great deal of work ahead of you. Albatross, I need to know something. Yes. What? This business with Halbeck. I can still prevent it, right? There's a way to stop them. This isn't going to end well, is it? Mike. It never does. trouble finding the place, I hope. No. You spared Sis's life. For that, you have my thanks. I... Here. I see. Regardless, thank you for sparing her life. The gratitude comes from both of us, it seems. According to what I've been able to dig up on you two, she's your bodyguard. If anyone should be saving someone's life, it's her. That is correct. Intel suggests she's an orphan. That you're not related. I see you've accessed Interpol records, Agent Thornton. I thought I'd wipe those clean. Well, I'm thorough. But if she's your bodyguard, why did you send her the Lazo's yacht? Isn't she supposed to be protecting you? She could have been killed, you know. That's no way to treat someone you care about. And no way to treat a child. Sis would not be here today if not for me, Agent Thornton. The world is cruel in many respects. And every day we survive, we've gambled against death and won. And the locket she gave you. Perhaps Sis is not a child anymore. To throw away a childhood memento so carelessly. That locket? It's not a childhood memento. Excuse me? The locket. It depicts St. George and the dragon. According to the legend, townsfolk fed their children to the dragon out of fear to prevent its wrath. 
Eventually, the king agreed to feed his own daughter to the beast. I'm not sure I like the implication, Agent Thornton. I wasn't aware there was one. I'm guessing only she knows how St. George factors in. But I'm wondering who G-22 is in the story, and who you are. I'm sure Sis could clear it up. If she wanted to tell us, that is. She can't. Can't? Or won't? She's a mute. Let's walk. I get 